Um, so I'm, I'm from uh, the Dr. Foster unit at Imperial and uh, my friend Victoria is from the clinical trials unit and we're going to be talking about two flavours of our Masters in Public Health. We've got a, um, the traditional on-campus one, or it was on campus before COVID came along, uh, and we've got a new online one and we're going to do a kind of compare and contrast the two, uh, particularly focusing on assessment. So we've run the face-to-face -face Masters in Public Health, or MPH, for about 15 years. Um, it's been popular. We've had around 60 students each year, which is as the most that we can physically accommodate, really, in our, our rooms. And every year we've had to turn away a lot of you know, pretty good people. So this led to the development of uh, Imperial's, actually, it's Imperial's first fully online degree. So it's a fully online Masters in Public Health called Global M MPH or GMPH. And that went live in October just last year with 66 students. And we're aiming to scale that up um, to about 250 as a kind of steady state. And um, recruitment is going well for, for this October. Of course, COVID came along. And so we've had to move a lot of the face to face. So the, the, the regular MPH teaching online come October, uh, which has been obviously a, a challenge. Obviously, I'm going to focus on the statistics module. So both of these courses have core statistics modules, so all students have to do them. And the problem I'm going to focus on is how do we assess students' statistics, knowledge, and particularly skills online? So it's important to, to note that most of our both kind of master's students um, have non-stats background so uh, and, and their their backgrounds are really varied um, all sorts i mean some of them do know something got financial analysts on there but others who, are, who might be vets or, or medics or all sorts of uh, folk so we're having to teach statistics from scratch and also programming from scratch we can't assume that they know anything about statistics or anything about programming so that means we've got to go through the, this is the basics of formulating research questions, distributions, just types of variables, and this is super basic, uh, hypothesis testing, uh, statistics software, uh, the, the basic kinds of regression, kaplan meier etc. We don't, in this core module, cover multi-level modeling, competing risks, regression, um, Bayesian stuff very much, or anything too fancy. So this is the core module. There is an advanced stats module that covers some of these things, but not the core one. So this slide is a cut down version of the comparison of the two kinds of uh, learning outcomes. So they have a lot of overlap, but their kind of philosophy is a bit different. So on the GMPH, the online version, uh, first you, we, we want them to be able to say, what, why is statistics useful in public health? It seems an obvious question, but it's, it, it's still really important. The second two rows in this table really say the, the same thing. You want to, we want the students to be able to do basic tasks, take an important data set, get to know it, do the, the basic descriptive stats, um, choose the right methods, regression or whatever, uh, and all using R. That's the online masters. The face-to-face uh, -face camp campus version uh, on campus one uses data. Then we, we want people, of course, to understand uh, statistical, statistical associations um, and be able to say, say the pros and cons of each kind of method and interpret the output that they get and understand charts and bias and p-values and uh, confidence intervals, all the kind of basic stuff. But the face-to-face -face one started developing these very much from a, a theory first base, get people familiar with distribution theory, et cetera, uh, and then move forward to how do you do that in Stata. Whereas in the MPH, GMPH one, I wanted to start from reverse, think about what skills I wanted the students to come away with, design the assessments to, to test those skills, and then design the rest of the course 
to teach those skills. And the focus is not on algebra in the GMPH in particular. I'm very keen for people to be um, a bit like what Matthew was saying earlier about learning through coding rather than learning through algebra. So there are four components of this um, statistical thinking and three types of regression. These have all been available on Coursera as MOOCs since uh, January 2019. They're very popular, there's about 30,000 learners on here. So those same MOOCs go into the GMPH, they have to do them. And then there's a, an assessment component. And uh, partly as uh, Maria was saying earlier, each of these, each week can, is a mix of short activities. So you've got the videos, so instead of long lectures, these are only five minute videos on average. Uh, discussion prompts for students to, to discuss what they've learned. See readings, uh, lots of e activities like running an analysis or critically appraising a paper. And then there are, each week you've got the live sessions, which Maria talked about quite a bit, um, where we, we put students into small groups and you reinforce their learning. And then office hours to answer queries particularly, and that's using a, a, a chat function. There are 10 weeks of this. Um, and, um, oh sorry, this is the master's version and I'm going to pass over to uh, Victoria to, who's going to talk yeah. you through this. Okay, so just to say, yeah, the um, structure of the MPH is very different. We had the, a whole day with the students once um, per week for 10 weeks and we divided the day up into two parts. So in the morning, we really covered the content of the course. So that would be like two to three short lectures sort of interleaved with hands-on stats software workshops. Um, uh, and then we would work through tutorial sheets. And then we, we tried to get quite a high tutor student ratio of about one tutor for five students, um, for the six students. And then in the afternoon, um, we, we sort of had a bit more, uh, wanted to have a bit more of an abstract time with the students. And we ran something called the Talking Statistics Workshop. Uh, and that was just an hour. Um, and we, we put the students into a peer group of five, five students, and then they stayed with that group through the 10 weeks. And we really just, the aim of them was to sort of get them to develop curiosity around statistics and just and it, with its regard to its application and sort of get them talking about what is good and what's bad. Um, so we, uh, we used to try and get them to put their laptops away, mobile phones away, sit around in a circle and, and, and talk and look at look each other in the eye. Um, and then um, we give them some very simple example, uh, sort of exercises on sampling or confidence intervals and things like that. So that was the daytime. Um, and then they had homework sheets and they, each year we've done a sort of a formative assessment at, at week six. Um, Alex? Okay. So the GMPH assessment, which they did in January just gone, this, is, this was a mixture of 15% or MCQs just um, and then most of it was they had to analyze a data set they hadn't seen before and write a 350 word abstract on it, flowchart showing how they'd handled the missing data, and one line of R code to show the model that they ran. We'd given them a mock exam on this two weeks earlier, same kind of process, this time with peer to peer marking, where they, um, they, they'd marked themselves. Um, and they found that really useful. And they had two weeks to do all this and they submitted those three items I mentioned, all staff graded and double marked. And they got uh, detailed feedback on that. Uh, we did find one of the issues, and there were others, is that we had to find two new data sets. And that, that's surprisingly hard to find suitable ones for in, uh, in public health for reasons of uh, information governance, for example. So for the resets, which were in Easter just gone, we did several things. So one, I think we were too ambitious. So we, we'd laid uh, several traps in terms of missing data uh, and an outcome with a, a potentially wrong way to calculate it, various things, various traps for them, which is exactly what you'd come across in, rea in you know, reality in, in working practice. But Assessing that, it, we found it hard to see exactly what the students had done. So their flowcharts that they submitted were 
pretty basic and we couldn't work out what records they they deleted and quite how they recoded variables some abstracts didn't really give us very good methods that, so we, we we didn't really know what they did obviously that happens in real life in journals um, and what we did instead was to instead of giving making them do the analysis we ran a load of analysis for them on a data set they'd already seen and we gave them our output that included a whole load of red herrings and then they had to choose which of the bits of our output was was relevant and then write up the abstract using the bits that they thought was were relevant so there, then there we knew exactly what they they had and had not done uh, and then we asked them to choose which analyses that they would run uh, on this the same research question and then we added some extra questions using of free text to ask them about uh, te test their knowledge or their understanding of the coefficients from the models for, in particular and the p-values of the models uh, etc as free text staff graded and this worked uh, much better so the reset question was I, i'll show bits of it it was what are the factors associated with higher systolic blood pressure um, so it's it, it's you know simple regression task but we gave them various things so would it be useful to summarize each variable in the data set yes it would would it be useful to do a histogram of systolic blood pressure yes it would would it be useful to do a t-test for gender and cholesterol well no um a kaplan wire plot no log rank tests no and yet, of course, some people pick that. So that was quite, quite revealing. And here's some of the output that we gave them. So in the top left, you've got uh, the, the histogram. So yes, that's useful. Uh, and then on the right-hand side, you've got a Kaplan-Meier plot where we've got age as the time variable and diabetes as the thing you're predicting, as what you're predicting. And that's, I mean, that's totally mad. There's no way you want to do that. And yet some students, the ones who hadn't been paying attention, they chose this. I'll pass you back to Toy to talk, to talk through the online MPH assessment, uh, the yeah, on-campus one, sorry. Given the interest of time, I'll, I'll skip over this fairly quickly, but just to say that so if, before COVID, um, this was our MPH assessment, which was 80% uh, for a two hour written exam um, and in, in the January. So our module runs from October to December. And, um, uh, and it sort of had multiple choice, short answer and long answer. And I'll show you some examples of those in a moment. And then, but before the Christmas break, we really tested them on the other sort of talking statistics skills that we were trying to get them uh, to develop over the, the 10 weeks um, through a 10 minute group presentation where similar to the GMPH, we'd given them a data set and we, we actually posed some, suggested some research questions, but we wanted them to choose a research question analyze the data set or well, clean the data set as a group analyze it as a group and then um, uh, present it um, probably the most challenging thing was the presenting it in a 10 minute summary when they've done all this analysis what do you present how do you interpret and, and making sort of real uh, appropriate con conclusions from the data set next alex um, so here's uh, an example of our standard written exam which were you know um, the multiple choice one uh, there's an example there one mark question about missing at random definitions. Um, here's an example, we've also got a short answer question worth three marks. And I quite like these kind of questions where there isn't a wrong answer. Uh, it, it, we were testing here, what are the assumptions you're make, well, making? So they could choose to uh, handle missing data in any way. They could choose to um, get rid of all the 15% who had missing data, as long as they said the right assumption that they were making with that, or they could choose to do multiple mutation. And, uh, and tell us that the correct assumption with that. And then we've also had long answer questions in there, such as um, giving them um, sort of some, well, on borderline results for a trial and, and get them to imagine that they're a public health expert and they've actually got to make a recommendation on these borderline results, what would they recommend? And again, trying to draw out all the things that they've learned over the 10 weeks regarding their uh, critical facial and statistical knowledge, as well as interpretation um, okay, so that's a written example. And the group presentation, I won't, I won't say too much about other than we gave them, they had three weeks to work on this and we gave them, um, uh, we set the, the context that 
here you are, um, you want to do this analysis and then you, you've got to present it at a public health annual conference for 10 minutes and you're to do it as a group. And then we suggested how they could break down the work in the three weeks. First, identifying, really honing on the research question and planning out. Second time, uh, the second week sort of um, actually getting on with the data cleaning and things and the final week doing the analysis and summarising the results. Um, and so, that, that, like I say, that was pre-COVID. Um, and the things that have changed since then for us is that we're sort of no longer able to live, deliver our in-person high ratio tutor student interaction. Um, and the students aren't going to be in the same, they can't have the same peer group relationships that they were developing last year. Um, and also we've been asked by our sort of teaching faculty not to do this online um, typical sort of exam that we had contributed 80%. And given the success that we found with the sort of second set of resits for the GMPH, um, so we are now this year going to be moving for our online assessment to this, um, submitting this um, abstract or give, being given this data, um, information, submitting, getting to submit an abstract and then testing some questions afterwards. Okay. okay. Uh, so final slide, just to, to sum up. I would say that the online assessments that test uh, skills and understandings and not, not just facts um, are indeed possible. We like the idea uh, of as part of that assessment as an abstract. That's what academics have to write. But also it's, a, it's just a, a, a good way of, of getting them to think, pick out what are the most important bits of what can potentially be a whole load of analysis and output. And they're feasible to mark in, in large numbers, although but not, they're not enough, I don't think, uh, by themselves. And that's why for the reset, we added some extra short questions about interpreting coefficients, for example. We are using the Coursera platform. Um, it is a bit clunky and, it, and as, a, as a marker, and teaching fellows and us and academics, it doesn't allow double marking, which is a pain in the neck. Uh, and that does lead to some wasted tar staff time with uh, workarounds. And finally, giving the students a whole set of output that included some red herrings actually made our lives easier. And uh, we think it made for more, uh, it was more consistent marking uh, as well. And it was certainly revealing what, how people try to argue their way why you should do a, you know, a Kaplan Meyer plot when you've got a uh, a continuous variable and no or no time variable. It was it was uh, it's kind of entertaining uh, as well. And uh, that's all. I, I will leave it there and happy for questions. Okay. Uh, thanks very much to Alex and Victoria for your great talk. Um, we're kind of short on time at the minute, so if people want to ask a question through the Q and A feature, they need they need to get in there quickly. Um, just while I give people a chance to do that, I'll, I'll just ask one of, um, of Alex and Victoria. And that's about um, the idea of authentic assessment. So it's been really interesting hearing how you've been able to approach doing assessment online. And I'd just like to ask your thoughts about making that, or how, how you've thought about making that assessment authentic in, in the sense of trying to kind of um, get people to use the skills that they would use in practice. You talked, Alex, about look, thinking about the competencies or the what you wanted people to be able to come out of this course with and how those um, how the assessments you've you've used have, uh, have really been addressing those points. So at the outset for the certainly for the GMPH I, I just a strong sense that I wanted what I wanted students to, to be able, able to do and they needed to understand the, the basic statistical concepts of uh, um, around hypothesis testing etc but we also wanted them to be able to take a data set that they'd never seen before, do the basic stuff in R. Uh, and I was keen to do R because it it's, it's, obviously it's free and it avoids all those licensing issues that uh, some, some other people have mentioned today. Um, and um, choose the right analysis and, and present the right bits of the output. So it, rather than a 10,000 word master's dissertation, which is what we've been you know, you know, very common. When you've got 250 plus students, whatever, online, that you can't do that. Uh, it's got to be feasible. And that's why we picked the abstract. Um, then we had to do a, a tweak. So 
we were trying to imitate what do pe what will people be doing in practice what kind of skills will they we, we want them to be able to do and that's why we use the backwards div, uh, design started with the well, you start with the learning outcomes and then you then you do the assessments then you build the whole course around getting to the assessment uh, so with the, with the online one we started from scratch and did it that way okay thanks alex um, in the interest of time, I'm going to hand back to Eleanor now. Well, thank you very, very much, uh, Victoria and Alex. That was really was a food for thought for assessment in statistics going forward. And I'm going to be picking up some of your tips for my uh, future courses.